So, we made it this far. We've got lines on this line chart for each country, but you can't really read it. I mean, the, uh, the lines don't have any labels. So I think we're going to need to add some labels to these lines. All right, so my goal here is to add labels. Let's get started adding the labels by forking this visualization. And I'm going to rename it to coronavirus deaths over time by country with labels. And you know, that color was cool and all, but I don't think it's actually really helping us here. So I'm just going to get rid of that color on our lines. Yeah, let's, let's set the stroke color. Um, well, I'm just going to get rid of this stuff that sets the stroke color for now. Let's just keep it as a fixed, um, like, black, maybe. Okay, we've got all these lines. And at the end of them, at the right end, I'm thinking is where we can put these labels. And you know what? This reminds me of a really cool interactive thing that I saw on uh, blocks.org. Let me see if I can pull that up. This one, yeah, so now it's an observable. But this is the one I was thinking of where there's a Voronoi overlay on top of it, which is super cool. I wonder if he's still got that turn on Voronoi. There used to be a checkbox where you could turn on the Voronoi. See, in the original on blocks.org, there was this uh, checkbox, which I think is super cool, and it's missing in the observable version. So, anyway, if you hover over here, um, the Voronoi polygon that you hover over determines which line it matches up to. So I think this interaction would be tremendously useful for the situation we've got right now, because uh, it's, it's quite similar to this. You've got a bunch of lines that are all sort of on top of each other. And what you want to do intuitively is hover to see which is which. So maybe this is the better road to go down instead of trying to add labels. Although labels are great, you know, you could print it out. So we're facing a fork in the road. What do we do? Should we try to add labels, as in the John Byrne Murdoch example? Or should we try to add interaction so you could hover? I've never done a video on Voronoi, and I've always sort of wanted to, so I'm leaning toward doing this, putting the Voronoi overlay. That would be fun, wouldn't it? The way you put the Voronoi looks, it looks more interesting on labels. <clears throat> right? I agree. Yeah, it's a little more interesting. Yeah, yeah like I, I, have, I have no idea how that thing works, and labels I've definitely done before. Awesome. So Voronoi it is. So let's try to add this interactive Voronoi hovering technique with the tooltips and the highlighting, like this, to our lines here. So I think I just forked this. Yeah, so instead of labels with Voronoi. Voronoi overlay. Because this is a technically cool thing to get working, and it's just Sweet, what can I say? And so, let me update the styles of the line to be the background data. Meaning, I'm just gonna change the stroke color to, let's say, gray. And that works, yeah, because gray is a named CSS color. There's all these named CSS colors that we can draw from, and this is one of them. And they look a little thick to me. I think I'll just make it a little less thick. I think that's in our CSS. Actually, we defined stroke and stroke width for our marker line in CSS, and then we then I changed the JavaScript to override it. So let me just um, change this JavaScript back so that CSS is in control of this. Yeah, so we're going to lose our stroke color, and that's just fine. And then back in our CSS, when we style this marker line. Uh, it says stroke is black, but did I... wait a minute. So marker line should be a class of these paths. Did I accidentally remove the class? Yeah, so let's put class name equals marker dash line. 
I, I guess I accidentally deleted it at some point. Okay, there we go. See that? So now we're back to this happy place of editing the styles with CSS. Here is where I'm going to make the stroke gray. Or better yet, better yet, let me use some transparency and say, sure, stroke is gray. Uh, let's make stroke black and then set opacity to 0 0.5. Let's see if that works. Yeah, so I like this approach better because you can bring down the opacity. You can see where there's a lot of overlapping things. But since we're eventually going to have a uh, selected line, like a hovered one, I think I'll keep this gray. Yeah, so those are su sufficiently in the background uh, but now the visual layering doesn't really work well with the, the tick marks. So I'm going to go and update the color on these tick lines. Yeah, so I'm going after the tick line. Yeah, this is the tick line. One of them. Ah, there it is. Ah, yes. There we go. So, yeah, if you, if you dig hard enough in the dev tools, you can make this dynamic CSS color picker happen. And so that way I can pick a sufficiently light gray. See here it's white. There's no grid lines. And you can see these sort of faded out lines. I'm going to bring the grid lines back just a little bit. Just enough so you can sort of see them. And then I'll copy that hex code out of here and back into our code for tick line. There we go. I think I might want to do the same for the marker lines. So if I inspect these marker lines, here it is. This is how we can change the color of the lines. Pretty sweet. So that's black. I could give it a little hue, you know, a little red. Or not. Let's just get it right in black and white. I like that phrase. Yeah, and the opacity, see, it might not be actually the best idea to use opacity because I just sort of want these all to blend together as background lines. And then there's going to be like one foreground line which we can make like red or thicker. But for the background lines, I think they should look kind of like this. Yeah, you have to copy it out of here. So that's the color for our marker line. And we want to turn the opacity off. Yeah, that looks decent. Okay, so the next thing up is to add this Voronoi overlay. Voronoi overlays are the craziest things. And essentially what we're going to be doing is adding more stuff to our line chart component such that the thing that it returns on the top, uh, see, all these DOM elements are being returned, the path for each of these country lines, uh, the text labels, all that. There's going to be a new sort of layer on top, which will be the Voronoi overlay. So I'm sort of writing what I would think of as the ideal code for this from the high level. Uh, the Voronoi overlay is going to be responsible for, you know, partitioning the screen into these Voronoi polygons and then giving you this uh, on hover event. And this is how I think I'm going to do it. On hover of these Voronoi segments will change some state which we're going to manage in React. And that will in turn cause this highlighted line to render. And that's when we can display the label just like in this example. See, I want to sort of make it almost the same as this example here. And our first step is to, to get here, to show these Voronoi polygons. So, from this perspective of our linechart.js component, I just want to say, put a Voronoi overlay there. And it's going to have something like on hover, and this is where I'm going to pass in a callback. I'll call it handle hover, or to be to be more specific, I'm going to call it handle Voronoi hover. Yeah, so I'm just going to define that as just a placeholder for now, 
const handle Voronoi hover equals, and when we use callbacks in React, uh, it's really best to just always uh, use the use callback hook, because if you don't, every time this component renders, it's going to redefine that as a new function. It's not going to be cached from last time, which it is if you do use callback, and that would be, it would cause some inefficient rendering downstream. So this is just my habit now. I just say, okay, use callback. Second argument is the dependencies array, which is empty, so it's just going to define it once for now. And it's going to define it as console.log. I'm just going to say hovered. So this is like a test of, you know, whether this is working. We should have the Voronoi's on the screen, and then when we hover over them, the console should say hovered, hovered, hovered. And then eventually we're going to know, you know, what you hovered on, but I don't know what that f is going to look like, but it's definitely going to come into this callback. So let's call it hovered ID or hovered, um, I don't know. Let's cross that bridge when we get there. The first step here is to define the Voronoi overlay component. And so let's do that. I'm going to make a new file called Voronoi overlay.js. So let's define this Voronoi overlay.js. What should this be even? I'm going to start by saying export const Voronoi overlay equals a function that ultimately is going to return some JSX of some sort. And I'm thinking, um, do we want to let D3 do the DOM manipulation or do we want to let React do the DOM manipulation? So probably it's going to be a group element that has a path for every Voronoi uh, segment. But I think this might be a good time to look through some of those old Voronoi examples. Here's what it looks like in this example, which is using D3 version, ooh, version 3.5. That might be too old. The API may have changed, may well have changed. So let me look at the version in Observable. All right, let's study this multi-line chart in Observable and see how it works. So the chart calls hover. We can use this thing to navigate to hover and I don't know, this is sort of confusing code to me. Like, where is the Voronoi, man? Where is the Voronoi overlay defined? Is that called hover? I don't know. Where is the Voronoi? I don't know. Well, let me just look at the D3 Voronoi documentation. Uh, that seems like a dead end. I don't know. Ooh. Deprecation notice, consider using D3 Delaunay. Okay, this is what we need. Compute the Voronoi diagram of a set of two-dimensional points. Ha, that's nice. Georgie, the Voronator Voronoi. So he was this guy that came up with these crazy algorithms. So I think we need some examples of this. Let's see if we can find some here. Yeah, here's some simpler examples. This is perfect. Hover Voronoi. Yeah, demonstration of D3 Delaunay. Great. So it's an implementation using Canvas, but the Voronoi stuff should be just the same. I think this code here is what we need. And also this definition of particles, which appears to return arrays that have XY coordinates, which I guess is the default way of accessing with D3 Delaunay. But anyway, let's try this. I'm going to paste this code from uh, the example, but I'm just going to comment it out for now because we don't have d3.delaunay available. And to do that, we need to pull it in with a script tag in index.html. So let me go to unpackage.com slash d3-delaunay to bring this in. And then in index.html, I'll make a new script tag and paste that URL. And now, if we go over to Voronoi Overlay, we should be able to say console.log d3 dot like that, and it should be defined. 
Oh, I have another unrelated error. Use callback is not defined. So let me just go back to line chart and yeah, this is where I used it. So we need to import that from React. Import React comma use callback from React. Okay, another reference error. Voronoi overlay is not defined. Yeah, so we need to import Voronoi overlay from Voronoi overlay. And now what do we see? We have something printed out that looks like a definition from D3 Delaunay. Great. And I've got some some unwanted noise in the console from use data. So just let me uh, get rid of that console.log. There it is. Okay, great. So now we've got D3.Delaunay defined. So we can go ahead and uncomment this. Const Delaunay equals Delaunay dot from particles. And particles really needs to be points. I'm going to I'm going to just call it points. And I think this needs to be an array of arrays, each of which has two elements, an X and a Y. But I'm not 100% sure. So let's check the documentation. Yeah, so I guess this is just how it works. Like you have to say Delaunay dot from points. See, that's the name they use too. And points is an array of arrays, each of which has an X and Y. And for us, the X and Y are going to be the pixel coordinates for the lines of our line chart. So we should be able to compute a Voronoi from the Delaunay if we pass in the dimensions of our program. And that's easy enough. We just use the sample code and we pass in the width and height. So zero, zero, width and height. This is gonna be inside of our inner rectangle. And so actually the dimensions are gonna be inner width and inner height, which we need to pass in as props from wherever this is being invoked, which I believe is line chart. Yeah, and we definitely have these in scope here. So we could just say inner height equals inner height inner width equals inner width. Uh-oh, we have a syntax error. Red alert! It's in Voronoi overlay. Oh, points equals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Let's just for now put some, just some tests, some dummy points in there before we can get the data working. And so I'll put one at um, 0 comma 0. I'll put another one in the middle let's say 200, 200, and I'll put another one at, you know, 150 and uh, 400. So this should work. Oh, it's a syntax error for this array. Gotta close out that array. There we go. All right, so now, now we should have console.log Voronoi, and that should get us the polygons that we need. Yeah, look at that. Would you look at that? That is pretty cool. Pretty cool. So I think triangles is what it needs, what we need to render. But you know, it looks like D3 Delaunay or Voronoi has a built-in render method. Maybe this one has the answer. How do we render these uh, polygons? Like what do they do with Voronoi once it's defined? Oh look, Voronoi.render. What? Okay, so this is rendering it using canvas, but how do I render it with SVG? Okay, so look at that. If a context is not specified, an SVG path string is returned instead. Okay, good to know, good to know. So let's try that. Let's just try making a path where D equals Voronoi dot render. And then we can make that a self-closing thing. It might be working. I think we just need to style this path. If we make the fill red, stroke red. Ooh, look at that, we are doing it. It is rendering it. This is kind of weird. Oh, I think the um, CSS might be overriding. Yeah, see path? path is getting set to fill of none, but I think that I wanted it to be the domain path. Huh. I don't even know what that was. 
Oh, it was for the the marker line. Okay, so I think those paths should be getting filled in. I don't know why they're not. But, you know, I don't want just one path. I just want, I want to have multiple paths, you know, one for each of these Voronoi polygons, and I'm not sure how to do that. Yeah, so the question is, how do we get the list of polygons from Voronoi? Ooh, render cell. Render cell. This is what we need. Voronoi.render cell. So we give it I, looks like. So what we have to do is, uh, for each point, I'm going to say return points.map. So for each one of these points, we're going to render a path. So I'll set it up so that for each point, it returns a path. And we can say Voronoi.render cell and pass the index i into here. And the callback takes as input the point, but also the index i, which we can use. So let's see if that works. OK, well, it may have worked. Let's see what we've got in terms of DOM elements. I would expect multiple paths. There it is. I just see one path, though. Wait a minute, I'm just a little confused about this. Because this should be returning multiple paths. Just to be, make it really explicit, let's return a group element with a class name of Voronoi. And then within here, we're going to return many paths and then close out that group element. Um, looks like I got a syntax error. Oh, is it that semicolon? You gotta be kidding me, is that it? Oh man, okay, there it is. There's our Voronoi overlay, finally. But let's just really see it. Let's set the stroke to be something else, like black. Okay, cool. I'm gonna set the fill to be um, a semi-transparent black. Or, you know, I'll just get rid of the fill. Actually, fill should be none. All right, so we've got some Voronoi overlay polygons there, we figured out all the plumbing needed to get from an array of points into rendering these Voronoi overlays. Now, let's derive this array of points from our data, from our lines. And remember, in linechart.js, we computed all data, which is all of the time series sort of combined together. So this is actually what is needed to feed into the Voronoi overlay points. So we can pass in all data into our Voronoi overlay, like this. All data equals all data. And then over in Voronoi overlay.js, we can take as input all data. And then we can define points to be, and I'll just comment out that old definition Points can be all data dot map, a function that takes as input d one row and returns an array that's going to have x and y. And so this is going to be x scale of x value of d, that's x, and then y is going to be y scale of y value of d. And then we just need to pass in x scale x value y scale y value oh do I have a syntax error oh I need another ending paren okay there we go but I think something is wrong what is it oh yeah x value is not a function right so we need to actually pass these in from the outside so let's go back to linechart.js and make sure we give the Voronoi overlay access to all that stuff. So x scale is x scale, y value, y value, y scale, and y value. OK, the program ran, but I'm not seeing the Voronoi overlay. And I'm not seeing any errors either. So I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what's going on here. So points 
might be incorrect. Let me see what the value of points is, just as a first step to debugging this. Okay, the y value is infinity. That would be the problem. Yeah, that's the problem. So it's y scale of y value of d, and this is where we added um, epsilon, I believe, last time to account for those zeros. And epsilon was one, so let's just try one plus y value of d. Okay, there we go. Now it works. Whew, yeah, there it is. There's our Voronoi overlay that we can use to do sweet hovering interactions. Got it to show up. That's a pretty, pretty good milestone. Okay, we got it this far. But one thing I don't like is that this logic is defined in a couple places. I wonder if we could unify it, or at least say, like, I don't know, epsilon. At least epsilon should be centrally defined. I mean, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but let me just pass in epsilon from line chart. Yeah, it's defined right there. Or you know what? It's defined here, actually, in the line generator. So let me try that approach, actually, because I just don't like to define things multiple times. You know, this particular here, a y scale of epsilon plus y value of d. I believe we can get at that through the line generator. And in a way, that makes sense to pass into the Voronoi overlay. So if we just pass in line generator equals line generator, I don't think we need to pass in all that stuff. So it's a, it's a good simplification to do. And let's try that. In Voronoi overlay, instead of all that stuff, we have access now to line generator. And I believe we can say line generator dot x, and it should return a function. Yeah, but the idea is that we can say all data dot map, and then return line generator dot x passing in d like that and I think this should work and we have to do the same thing for y but that way it'll be centrally defined in just one place but then used to multiple places and this has to be line generator dot y and prettier is not putting that in the multiple lines hmm, funny oh syntax error there we go. All right, it works. Sweet, it works. Okay, so that's a good simplification to do. Now our API is a little cleaner, and we've got these Voronoi polygons on here. Now, I think would be a good time to add the hover interaction. And so we can do that by adding listeners to these path elements, as a matter of fact. So let's do that. On this path, I can say on mouse enter equals, I think we had something called handle hover, or on hover. In linechart.js, we had something called handle Voronoi hover. And we pass that in to our Voronoi overlay component as on hover. On hover. And we don't need that epsilon anymore. I'm not using it. And then we can just pass in on hover to on mouse enter, and we should actually see it work. If I hover, see that? It works. Whenever I hover over something, it says hovered on dot dot dot. So we're one step closer here. It's pretty good. The question now is, how do we know what we're hovering on? I mean, we didn't even pass any metadata into, you know, uh, the Voronoi. We just passed in these x, y, uh, pairs. So I don't know like what the best practice is. Maybe we could just use the index to go back to our original data points. Yeah, maybe in this on hover we could embed uh, a new callback, but I don't want to I don't want to create so many functions because there's so many points. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like with D3 there there's a cleaner way to do it, but with React See, I really want to just define this once. So let me let me define it here. Let's try handle mouse enter equals a function. And then here I'll say handle mouse enter. And I believe we get an event to our callback. So what if I say console.log event? 
and I hover, what do we see? We see these events that have... See, what I'm thinking is, can we use this event to get back at the original index of the array? I, be, I believe we need event.target. So event.target is actually the DOM element. Yeah. But the question is, for a, for a given DOM element, can we get its index in its parent? I'm going to research a little bit about that. It's really going to be part of the DOM API node index in its parent. Yeah, here it is. Get child node index. Huh. Well, I don't want to be calling it index of to figure this out. Yeah, that could work, but index of is an expensive computation. All right, what is our main problem here? Our main problem is when we hover over one of these, we need to get back to the original data element. And how do we do that? Well, if we knew the index that this was at, then we could just say all data at index i to get back to it. But we don't have that index. So what if we just exposed the index as another like property on this path? and then extracted it out in the handler. That way, we, we would only have to define this handler once and not have to define a new function for each and every path element, which would work, but it's kind of an expensive uh, proposition. But I don't know, if it's cached, if we use Memo with that? Hmm. You know, maybe that would be fine, because now I'm thinking we could Memoize it. So let's try that approach. What if on mouse enter we define a new function that will call on click, or sorry, not on click, on hover. And we just pass the index i. Or, you know, let's just pass um, all data at index i. Yeah, this should work. So now if I hover, it says hovered on, because we haven't exposed it. But the idea is on hover will take as input the data element, I'll call it D, the row, and then we can just say console.log D to see the one that we hovered on. Let's see if it works. Hey, it seems to work, look at that. But the problem here is it only has death, total, and date. It does not have the country, which is important to us. But that's not a problem because we can easily add the country information back in, because here's where we did our data transformation. And I remember it was weird to me that we were not using country name, which I had computed and then never used. So if we just put country name attached like this to these data elements, now that this is going to come through in our hovering. So now if I hover, it gives me these objects that have country name, date, and death total which are all things that we could expose in a, a little tooltip label that pops up. But uh, I'm thinking what I'd like to do first is get the notion of an active line working, like an active country line, as in this other example. See, with this other example, there's a line that's active. And I really like that feature because it lets you really navigate pretty clearly uh, through these lines. So let's work on that. Now that we have this hovering interaction working, let's work on making a highlighted line for the currently hovered country. So how would we do that? I'm thinking we introduce a piece of local state inside of our line chart to deal with uh, the currently active country line. And the question is, what should we call it? Let's call it active country name. So I'm going to use uh, React's use state hook. And to do that, we have to declare uh, this destructured array like this, where the first one is active country name, and the second one is set active country name. Equals use state. And we need to import use state from React. And now, when we define this handle Voronoi hover, we can actually set the active country name. 
And we can do that by invoking set active country name, passing in d dot, I believe it was country name. Now, if in our rendering function, we just log out the current value of active country name, this should tell us if it worked or not. So as I hover, it works, see that? It's changing. Sweet! So that's how you can extract the country names from the Voronoi overlays that you are hovering over. Now, let's render an active line based on this value. So how would we do that? I mean, intuitively, it would be another line. So here's the logic that renders all the lines for this line chart. These are sort of more the background marker lines. And what we need to do is add another one of these marker lines, but it's going to be the foreground marker line. So I'm going to give it a class name of marker line and um, actually what are we calling the active country? I'll give it a <coughs> class of active. And for this, the D, the SVG path string, is going to be line generator of country time series but for the active country. So I'll just call it active country time series. Oh, I'm just realizing I, I, I destroyed our old code. Hold on. I'm going to bring that back. Yeah, we just want to make a new path on top of everything else like this. So, uh, but this, this is only going to show up if we have active country name defined as anything. And so to guard against that, I'm going to say active country name using this ternary operator. If so, renders that, that path. Otherwise, render null. And so this will guard against the, the case where we haven't yet hovered over anything. Now we're left with the problem of deriving active country time series. But I feel like this is also something that's sort of already defined. Let me just look back here. All data. Hmm. Yeah, so I think the approach we're going to have to take here is to filter the data. To just isolate that one country's time series. And, you know, we can do that right in here. Because if we know that there is an active country name, instead of having a separate variable, we can just say... Uh, this is going to be a function of active country name. And so we're going to have to filter the data. Because remember, each element here is a time series that corresponds to one country. And so we can say data.filter. And data.filter takes, it's an, a native array method for filtering. And it takes as input one of those entries, which is going to be country time series. And so we want this to return true because we want to just isolate one, one country. Uh, now that I think of it, we don't want filter because filter returns an array. We want find, which returns just one thing that it finds. So whenever, whenever this function returns true, it's going to return the corresponding element in the array. And so we want to check is country time series dot country name equal to the active country name. And, you know, I don't believe we ever defined country name on the country time series. So let's do that. Over in use data.js, when we transformed the data, we returned this, which is really country time series. So I'm going to make that into a variable called country time series. And that's what we're going to return. Um, but we want to assign country name to be a property of this. So after we define it and before we return it, we can say, and keep in mind, country time series is an array. In the JavaScript language, arrays can have additional properties, which are sometimes useful. And in this case, it would be super useful to know what country this is just by looking at the array. So we can say, country time series dot country name equals country name. 
now it might work. See, as I hover, I think something's happening, but we didn't style the line any differently. <laughs> so we're not going to see anything. So let's work on the styling. I gave the active marker line a class of active. So in the CSS, let's style it. Yeah, here we can say marker lane, comma, active. I believe comma is the delimiter for selectors, uh, for selecting like things that have multiple classes. But here, let's make the stroke black. Ooh, no, that that affected all marker lines. Oh, it's a dot. Yeah, if it, if it has two classes, yeah, yeah. So if it has the class of marker line and the class of active, you can select it with dot marker line dot active. So now, if I hover, oh, see that? Something happened. But it's extremely slow. Extremely slow, and I think I know why. I think I know why. So let's solve this performance problem. And this is the performance problem that I had thought about earlier. And I think it has to do with um, re-rendering all the Voronoi points all the time. So the thing to realize here is that we only really need to render this Voronoi overlay one time. And as the active line changes, we don't need to re-render the Voronoi. We can just leave it as it is. And so to do that with React, this is a performance optimization. Uh, we can use use Mimo. It's a React hook. So let, let's, let me try that and see if it improves our performance. Import use Mimo from React. Use Mimo implements this concept of memoization, which means a function depends purely on its inputs. It's not going to return something different each time. That's called idempotency. So memoization really only makes sense for idempotent functions, which ours happens to be. And ours happens to depend on, you know, all the variables that get referenced here. And so we're going to have to say use memo, pass in a function that returns this, and then specify the array of dependencies, where if any of these dependencies change, we do need to re-render it. But if we just change the active country name, uh, none of these inputs are going to change, and so it's going to use uh, its cached or already rendered version. And so that's why use Mimo uh, improves performance. In other words, when this gets rendered, all these DOM elements that correspond to these little polygons are not going to be touched. They're just going to be left in place. So there's going to be zero interaction with the DOM uh, for those. So hopefully it should speed things up quite a bit. Let's see. The way we can do this, I'm just going to memoize this whole thing. So I'm going to say use memo. The first argument is a function that returns this JSX here. And then the second argument is the dependencies array. And so anything that gets referenced in here needs to be in the dependencies array. For example, points on hover all data, and Voronoi. And with Voronoi is where things get a little tricky, because right now the code is not memoizing the Voronoi. And this expensive computation of the Delaunay triangulation, that's something that we really should be memoizing. So let's define it this way. Const Voronoi is use memo. First argument is a function. Second argument is the array of dependencies. and in the body of this function is where we're going to define points, Delaunay, and Voronoi. Uh, but instead of defining this, we can return it from the function. So it gets assigned to this variable out here. OK, now Prettier splits this up into two lines, which is a lot more readable. So we need to fill in the dependencies array for this. And so what does it depend on? It depends on all data, line generator, inner width, and inner height. And we're running into some problems because points is defined in here and not out here. But really, what we want to memoize over is, actually, we want to memoize the whole, the whole darn thing. So I just realized we can actually uh, just have one use memo statement with all these dependencies 
and it can return this group element. Yeah, so instead of returning the Voronoi, so Voronoi is there, and then this function returns the JSX, which should be returned from our React component. So here's where we can say return, use Mimo, and all this stuff. So let me just make sure there's no syntax errors or anything. So these are the dependencies that we had before, but the thing is, these are defined internally. Um, we still need on hover. All data is already there. Voronoi is inside of there, so we can just add on hover to our dependencies array, and that should be that. And then if I close this, yeah, the corresponding closing tag is use memo up there, and I think we're in good shape. So now, the moment of truth, is it going to work? Yeah, it works. But let me just make sure that the, the memoization is working. And the way that we can do that is to put a console.log statement right in here. Um, ideally, it should just output once. But, and if it's outputting multiple times, we know we have an, an issue. Console.log memoizing. So we should just see it once. OK, we see it. Uh, every time it changes, which, which means that something is wrong. Something is wrong. Probably some of our dependencies might be changing. So here's how we can sort of test and debug to see which things are changing, because one of these five things is changing, but shouldn't be. So here's what I can do. I say use Mimo just as a debugging thing. A function and then the array of dependencies. And so I can move this console.log memoizing to inside here. And now I can incrementally add things to see which one is actually causing it to recompute. So let's check if all data is changing every time. I doubt it, I doubt it is, but let's just check. So memoizing once, and as I hover, oh, it says memoizing again and again and again. I think we found our culprit, all data. So if all data is changing each time, why would that be? Oh, it's because we didn't memoize it at this level. Yeah, so if we memoize it here as well, so we use memo and return that thing, and then the dependencies array contains just data. Yeah, so only if the data changes will this recompute. And then we have to import use memo from React. Now, let's see if it works. If I hover, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I didn't put any debugging statements. So now, if we go back to use memo uh, in our Voronoi overlay, and we bring back that console.log memoizing, let's see, is it still is it still um, updating unnecessarily? Let's find out. It is, unfortunately. OK, so let's, br let's bring back this debugging sort of framework. At least when I hover, it doesn't say memoizing based on all data. And so that's good. See, it's just giving us the country names. It's not, it's not saying memoizing. So that means all data is good to go. All data is not any longer the source of our problem. But what about line generator? Is that the one? If I hover, it says memoizing, memoizing, memoizing. Why would line generator get redefined every time? So over in line chart, line generator is another thing that we could memoize. Yeah, so I think it's a good idea to just do that because we don't need to recompute this every time the selected country changes. So let's try it. Use Mimo. And the second argument is the array of dependencies, which in this case includes x scale, x value, y scale, and y value, and epsilon. So now when I hover, ooh, it still is saying Mimoizing. That's because we didn't memoize anything else. Uh, you know, we can really memoize our scales as well. Probably should. But let's memoize this x scale. 
whose dependencies includes all data and x value. And let's do the same for our y scale. Use MIMO, function that returns the scale, and an array of dependencies, which includes epsilon, all data, and y value. Now, is it still updating too frequently? No, it's not. Hey, hey, we solved it. Woohoo, yeah. And you know, it's feeling more snappy. It's feeling quite a bit snappier. Let me check. In our Voronoi overlay, if I comment out this little debugging trick and go back to the original rendering, the whole rendering, uh, now, if it only prints once, then we're, we've solved the performance problem completely. So let's check. Memoizing, and if I hover, no more memoizing. See that? And it's much more performant. It's much faster, yeah. Cool. Yeah, this is pretty cool, pretty good. So I think I'm gonna take a, a break, and when we come back, we can add the little labels that say, actually, which country it is, the date and the number of deaths. So you could hover over and see what exactly does each uh, point represent. So stay tuned.